What's up, fellow anglers? Doing things a little bit differently today. It is winter. Ponds are freezing over. I need a hobby to give me something to do through the winter. So I decided I'm going to start making jigs. So I got all the equipment I needed over the weekend, and here it is. So I've never done this before. Um, this is going to be my first run through, and I figure, you know what? Let me take you all along for the ride. Lighting is a bit different as we're down here in my basement, so I apologize in advance for that. And hopefully the sound is okay. This is going to be a learning experience for me, so it should be a good time. Let's stop talking. Let's get to jig making. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. Um, now, luckily, I was looking at a lot of this stuff online, uh, but I did double check my local uh, bass shop, and they actually had pretty much everything I needed to get started, and almost all of it was at a lower price than even for the manufacturer. This is Zyner's Bass Shop in Wichita, Kansas. They do have an online store. Uh, feel free to go and check those folks out. Uh, they've been selling bass equipment since my dad was shopping. It was pretty cool. So I've got a lead pot, which is right here. Um, just popped open the top, but we'll get that open and take a look. Um, we've got a do it mold, and I went with Midwest Finesse Jig, you know, otherwise known as a Ned Rig, right? Uh, probably one of my most most used jigs. So uh, that'll be great to start us off with. Of course, I've got some soft lead uh, that they sold me to use. So starting off with the right stuff. Got the correct size hooks. These are Do It Owner. 5313 one-out hooks, black chrome. Uh, I've got a small bag of wire keepers uh, that are in there as well. Uh, I do have gloves, of course, and I'll get ready to put those on here in a second. Uh, I have a mask. This is just a temporary mask for now. I am going to get an actual permanent mask. I need it for my uh, other woodworking and metalwork stuff as well. Uh, a candle to help smoke the, uh, the mold before we get started. Powder paint. I just got one color at this time. Um, they kind of repackaged this over there at the local base shop. This is the watermelon flake. And I don't know if y'all can see in there. Uh, but it is a green with red flake on the actual head. So pretty excited uh, to be able to paint them with that. And then my amazing wife uh, found me this wonderful toaster oven, which I'll use to cure the jigs. Um, got that for two bucks at the Goodwill. So it does have a wire rack. I'll just use that for now to hang them on there. Uh, and I'll probably uh, custom make something else down the road. Well, that should be everything to get us going. Alrighty, well, let's get this thing plugged in. Melting some lead. Go ahead and turn it all the way up to get started. And place in two of these ingots. So next up, I'm going to smoke the mold. And I saw a lot of people do this just to help it release afterwards. Um, I did buy that soft lead. So I'm hoping that that will be just fine. And we will see with time. So let me get this out here. And raid my wife's candle stash. This is just a matter of getting the black candle soot on everything. Let's see, I don't know. Probably need some more. Give it a try. Seemed like when I saw the folks online doing this, it was pretty much blocked out. So we'll see. But again, I'm learning as I go. If somebody's watching and you guys, uh, or somebody's watching and you pour jigs yourselves, I'd love any extra tips or anything you wanted to pass on to me. Definitely open for feedback. But I am just one of those people that likes to learn hands-on and just see where it takes me. After all, that's kind of why I love fishing. Now on this one, I am going to go ahead and pour all of them just so I can get an example. But I will think I'll primarily use the 1 8th, 3 32nd, and 1 16th 
the bottom three sizes, it's kind of cool. Is likely the ones that I personally will use the most. Okay. So got that set. Now, real quick, it looks like that other lead has melted. So I'm just curious. Do a quick test here. Well, that just comes out nice and simple. Very cool. Well, it's still a good liquid state, so I'm going to drop it down a bit more. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and set in my hooks here, okay, and again, these are the owner uh, 5313, which is for this mold. It is nice the molds will tell you exactly what hooks and everything that you need, so all the hardware, hardware you need, it will tell you. You get this, the size of the number one hooks as well, it's a little bit smaller than these. These are gonna work out well. Okay, there is five. And six. Okay. Now the wire keepers. Now these are a lot smaller. I did saw that uh, one gentleman on YouTube recommended getting one of those little uh, magnetic pencils from like the, the Wooly Willy. I don't know if you guys used to play with those, youth folks used to play with those, as they can be handy. Alright, so I got six of these wire keepers out. Probably gonna need little tubs for all of these. And so these also have little slots right next to the hook. A little bit easier if it's doing it flat, but I'm trying to bring you all along on the journey here. Okay, every time I put one in, I just bump another one out. Which is fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay. It's three. Four. I'm sorry, this lighting is horrible down here. Five. I have another light over my bandsaw so to try it. Here's number six. Oops. It's on too much of a roll there, I guess. It'd be easier to put the keepers in first. There we go. And then come back with the hook. Come on now, man. There we go. So there we go. We've got hooks and keepers in every slot. Lay this down. Close this up. That is it. All right. Well, there's nothing like just going for it. So I'm going to start with this one that's the furthest away. Okay. Figure I'll get better at this as I go. Alrighty. That's set for a moment. All right, here we go. First jigs. Popping it out. Yeah, looking pretty good. Grab these. Not sure how hot or not hot this is, so I'm going to be a bit cautious. So still smoked, which is pretty cool. I've seen a couple of folks leave this up on the top here just to warm their mold, so I'm going to do that as well. So, let's take a look. Well, don't try to wiggle it off. There's a lesson learned real quick. Let me just snip this one off. Stop where you want. Check that out. Jig head. Oh, 
one. And I'll just sand that off the top. So let's cut these ones off here. Boom. There we go. One, two, three. We got four ones out of the six. That's pretty good for the first roll through, right? Four jigs out of six. Nice. All right, let's make some more. That was cool. I'm going to switch up the camera to get a bit, pretty good, a little bit better view. See if we can do an overhead view. And kind of see how I work. And uh, I'll see how many of these I can knock out real quick. And then we'll switch to paint. So I realized I just did the whole last portion in time lapse, but I've got the, the oven warming up here. And I've got these painted now with that watermelon red paint. Pretty excited about it. They came out pretty well. I did some experiments, and some of them I only heated up enough to where the powder would stick, like in this one, for example. Same paint. It just wasn't heated up as much. That first one I showed you, I heated up pretty much all the way, um, and it kind of melted right to it. So I've got different varying levels that I have applied the paint to those. I'm pretty excited uh, about how these are coming out already. I think they look great. Um, after we cure these in the oven here for about 20 minutes, we'll see our final product. And they'll be ready to rig and fish with. Let's get them in the oven. Slide these in to the oven. And I am going to take my phone and set a timer. 20 minutes. All right, my friends, so I just pulled one of these out of the oven and cooled it off, and oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. I am pumped, y'all. Absolutely pumped to get these out of the water. So, so this green pumpkin with red flake jig heads absolutely amazing very cool i'm pumped 
There's 25 of them in one night. I don't know about y'all. That's freaking cool. I'm pumped. Absolutely pumped. So I'm gonna let these cool off the rest of the way. And then I'm adding my taco box. I'm gonna have to get some more paints here pretty soon. Now real quick, as a comparison, this one here is one that I did a little extra heat on the paint. And so you can see it's got a little bit more of that red flake in it. At least I hope you can see that. It's got a good solid green pumpkin base with more red in it. And then this one in comparison is one that'll let more of it be, it was more of a powdery leave on it. So it didn't all the way melt on the bait when I dipped it in the powder, it gave more of that green color. So kind of putting these side by side, same paint, just different heat applied when I applied the powder paint. So this one has a more of a brownish green. So I think it's a little bit burnt with the red. This has a very light and shiny green with the red flake. Absolutely thrilled. I'll put a couple of shots of these up on my Instagram so y'all can take a look at them closely. Kansas Angler over there as well. As always, thanks for hanging out with me. If you can't get outside, bonus if you get a pull in the water. I may not be outside, but I'm dreaming about it right now. That's for sure. Thanks for watching, my friends.